Hi everyone, this is Smuti. Welcome to Q Automation Classes. In the last class or the last session, class number 10, we have seen how to externalize the parameters, right? So whatever is not part of the code, you should not put them inside the code, right? So like the title of the page, verifying the title, expected title of the page. So that is the external part which can be externalized to the properties file. And from there we read and we uh, verify the so we do the assertion and verify whether the title is proper or not okay so in today's session uh, we are going to learn about the log 4j okay so what exactly is this log 4j let's go and see log 4j right so if you see this log 4j this is java based logging utility okay so you have seen right we are using system.out.println so what happens when you write system.out.println on your console you see the uh, logs right whatever the system.out.println is there you see that while the after execution right so this uh, i think we have in the home page right so you see expected page title is this one and here also assertion is passed expected page title is matching with the actual page title so these are the sop statement what you see on the console after the uh, program has been ran but now this is only to the console right if you see system dot out dot printer and so to the out object only we are saying just print so this is the console logging right it is logs into the console but what happens if you want to put them into a log file or something like that right so you want to get the details into a log file and store it there we cannot do that possibly with the help of system dot out dot printer and so in that case we need to go with the log so log 4j has the different different uh configurations right so we can say whether we need console appender or we need file appender we can specify these appenders are nothing but where exactly you want to show right so but uh, there is one more thing here so log 4j 1.x right uh, it has some vulnerabilities so now we are as, uh, going with the log 4j 2 right so if you see log 4j vulnerability it will show you what what was the vulnerabilities maybe i can show you through the maven central repository right so when adding the uh, log 4j right let's say log 4j okay so if you see apache log 4j if i open it so you'll see legacy version of log 4j logging framework log 4j 1 has reached its end of life and is no longer officially supported it is recommended to migrate to log 4j 2 right so this is what we are going to learn now what is exactly is this log 4j 2 how to configure it in our framework okay so before going to the framework implementation i want to uh, go through what exactly is the log 4j 2 and how exactly it can it works actually so then in the next session we'll see how to implement with with respect to our framework okay and uh, if you are working with the log 4j right so you need to add this as the dependency that we have already added right to our pom.xml and uh, let me quickly show you log 4j related dependencies in pom.xml so here log 4j we have added okay log 4j api and log 4j core okay three things has already been added this is for the log login right and the uh, log 4j this is the dependency part but apart from that we need to have the configuration file also right so in which format you want the log to be generated right and uh, wh what exactly is the appenders i told you right so those kind of what is the lay layout type what will be your pattern right we need to define all these things right we'll look into that shortly so let's do one thing so there are two ways we can do we can specify these configurations with the help of the properties file or with the help of the xml file okay so anything you can go with so i'll be creating log 4 j 2 dot xml file and in that xml file we'll have all this information okay so if you want to see how to write that one i have already posted it here in log 4 j dot to xml if you go to the qa automation classes dot com so okay so from here if you see log 4 j 2 dot xml click on this one you will be able to see the code okay so we can copy this one we'll go through it okay we'll go through it what exactly is this so copy but where to put this log 4j to xml so whatever the this xml file properties file they should be part of the resources right so let's go to the resources section so here we have resources let's create new file okay say log 4j to dot xml okay so log 4j to dot xml paste it okay save it so what exactly the content of this one xml version and encoding is default right configuration status is one what exactly is this configuration status will come to know strict request to true okay so now here my intention is to uh, log the logs into two places one is the console another one is to into a file okay so if you see 
I'm saying the appenders. Okay, what exactly is the appender? Appender means we have to say where exactly we are trying to log. So first appender is the console. So I want to log the uh, file, whatever the log statements are getting generated. I want it to be part of the uh, std out. This means your console. Okay, and layout pattern is the pattern layout. So this is the pattern. So in this pattern, you generate the log, right? So when you see the logs are getting generated, you can see the date uh, in this format. It should we uh, should create. Okay, so this is exactly a different type of pattern. In this pattern, you will generate the uh, log file. So we'll try to run some statement and we'll see what what this pattern specifies. Okay, and this is one of the appender. We say uh, this is the console appender. Similarly, I want whatever is uh, logs are getting generated that also to be present inside a file. We'll create a log file and in that log file also the steps should uh, step, like steps should get logged. So now here I'm saying appender type equals to file. So I'm going with the file appender here. Here it was console. Here it is file. Okay, name equals to file. File name. So what is the location we are giving here? dot slash log slash app dot log so here if you see we don't have a log folder over here right but in turn in the current directory dot means in the current directory okay so in this entire current directory it will go and it will create slash log directory and then inside that there will be a file called app dot log and in that app dot log everything is going to get logged and here also we are going with the pattern layout and we are using the same pattern right in the same pattern we are going to log in so these two are the appenders are done so we are closing the appenders tag okay so two appenders are there one is the console appender and the other one is the file appender then then loggers right what exactly we're going to log so we're saying root level equals to info what are these root levels we're going to understand now right so there is some root level so we're saying info appender ref equals to file and std out here we're saying okay we are going to write it into the file as well as the standard out that is the console and then we are closing this root tag and then loggers and then the configuration okay so this is the simple simple log for two dot xml where we have defined two appender types one is the console and one is the uh, file right and we have defined the corresponding uh, patterns okay so let's see so uh, how, how to understand whether this is working fine or not we can go with a normal class and there we'll try to have some statements okay then we'll understand how exactly it is working so let's say for the test case here i'm creating a normal class okay so let's say uh, log logger class right so log 4 j example or something you can say log 4 j 2 example okay so here if you see log 4 j example and uh, let's have a private static okay let's say logger right so logger and uh, name we can give any logger name logger okay so now this logger you have to import search for dependency okay so what kind of dependency you want so we want a uh, log 4 j dependency right more actions so so let's do one thing here uh, before defining the logger let's have the main method actually right so main so inside the main let's say private so let's say logger so this logger should come from the uh, org apache logging log4j log4j right and dot logger i think this is fine okay so logger and then we should have the log manager also okay so here let's say private okay private and i'll say static logger logger static let's say logger capital l is logger let's say logger okay and uh, okay this is just declaration and uh, logger equals to we'll say log manager log manager so this log manager should also come from the log 4j right so log manager dot right get logger so get logger string name so give the name of the class okay so log 4 j 2 dot example okay so log 4 j uh, 2 dot example okay so semicolon and uh, i think this is logger right okay, okay. so now uh, 
the required type code dot logger okay i can cast it okay so okay so log 4j logger and here uh it should be working right why again i have to cast it this logger is coming from log 4j dot logger don't we have only logger log 4j dot logger yeah we have right we don't need that code so the logger should come from the org apache logging dot log 4j dot logger so here private static logger logger or you can say log whatever right log dot info let's say log it will create confusion unnecessarily log so let's say log equals to log manager uh, dot get logger and inside the get logger you give the name of the uh, class for which you are trying to generate the log and let's have a few uh, log statements okay so if you remember here right i told you there are some here right okay root levels levels right this info and all will be looking into that shortly okay so let's say log dot and i'll say start with the fatal so double quote so let's say uh, this is fatal log okay this is just for uh, showing right which one is going to execute it at what point of time this is fatal let's say this is fatal log okay this is fatal log okay so now we'll just copy paste it and uh, different log levels will show here okay okay so fatal after the fatal there is error okay so we'll say error this is error log okay fatal then error after error is done we can say one okay this is one log and uh, uh, after one there is info this is info log and fatal error one uh, info then debug and trace okay so let's say debug debug so this is debug log and here let's say trace okay and this is trace log Sorry, this is trace log okay uh, and fatal okay right so if you see i have defined few log levels right one two three four five six six log levels i have defined so that is fatal error one info debug trace okay so if you see there are few more like uh all together there are eight okay let me list it out uh whiteboard okay so if you see the different log levels i'll just list it out what are the different types of the log levels we have okay so new whiteboard okay so blank template okay so you see here okay different types of log levels so first you will be off okay so one minute so the lo different log levels so starting with first first will be off okay so off is the first log and then fatal okay off then fatal and then error then warn and then info then debug then trace then all okay so these are the trace and then all these are the eight uh, log levels right and if you see i'll just show you so here first uh, trace okay we'll come to that after uh, showing you the uh, output okay trace then debug then info like that it will be trace then debug then info then warn okay after one there is a error then fatal then off okay so error then next is fatal and next is off last one is off okay so what exactly is this one right so why i have written like this this is less than less than less than less than less than right so we'll see this okay so let's go to the uh, our IntelliJ idea and see we have created all these six level logs okay one is all one is off those two right i have not mentioned so now apart from that all other six log levels i have already listed it out right so let's go to the our uh, log 4j 2.xml okay and then we'll see okay and we'll try to change the uh, root level and then we'll try to run it okay so let's go to our log 4j 2xml and see here root level i'm saying info so initially it was info so let's first run uh, change it to fatal 
so let's say fat alpha fat tal right so now if i run my uh, main class log 4j2 example let me run this one okay see so now what you see here you see log 4j2 example it's coming as fatal log 4j2 example this is a fatal log okay and if you see a new folder got created here with log right and here app dot log got created if you see here right uh oh, what is that log 4j2 example so if you go here in the log folder app dot log file should get generated here app dot log is getting created and let's understand this uh pattern also a little bit so if you see we are saying the hour minutes seconds and all right so this is printing in that manner our minutes and uh, seconds and uh, then percentile t giving a tab and then the main right so from main it is coming and this is the class now right? from where it is running and then this is the fatal so what type of the uh, log is it so it is a fatal log and log 4j2 dot example this is the class name right and the what is the log message the log message is getting uh, shown over here right so this is the uh, pattern in which pattern we want it to be executed right so right so this is uh, okay so fatal means you will see only the fatal related log okay the first one so remaining all will get ignored error one info debug trace will get ignored okay so let's change it into the error and see okay so log 4 j 2xml so fatal will change to error okay and then now again run log 4 j 2 example so if i run log 4 j 2 example dot java so if you see i should see fatal as well as the error so here fatal is coming error is also coming right so when you have the error you see fatal as well as the error so let's go to our uh, whiteboard so so when you have the fatal you see only fatal when you say error you see both fatal and error okay and now if i say one i should be seeing one error and fatal right so let's see that so let's change this to one let's run it so i should see one and this is error and fatal so similarly after one we can uh, again go to the next higher state okay so that is uh, info okay info let's run so you should see info okay and uh, similarly if you want you can have debug and trace also so let's say debug debug and one more with the trace okay. so you see till debug and now let's have a trace so when i do the trace i should be able to see all of them okay so all of the logs that i have uh, there in the class okay trace debug info one error fatal right so and one more thing we can make it as all or off right if i make it off if i run nothing will get generated because i'm saying log level is off you don't generate any log if you see nothing is generated so if i go to dot log you keep keep on seeing those everything is getting added right so everything keeps on adding one by one okay whenever you run it so everything is getting added one by one okay uh, it will not override it will keep on adding and the time stamp is important so that you can understand what exactly happened at that particular point of time it executed and what exactly happened okay so yeah this is all to the log for the guys and uh, maybe uh, in the next session we will see uh, how to integrate it with our automation framework okay and uh, before signing up for the day we can go and update the again log level to info okay so log.info mostly we're going to use okay so log.info and just run it okay okay so we can go ahead and delete this log 4j2 example because we just saw logging is working properly let's go and delete we don't need it and uh, next session we'll have this log 4j implemented in our framework okay so yeah that's all to this session guys if you guys are really enjoying these videos i would request you to subscribe to my channel and uh, share these videos with your friends and colleagues and uh, if you guys have any questions or any doubt please feel free to ping them in the comment section so we'll meet in the next class thank you bye bye